Well, this this having chart is you can see the discipline here. It's been mathematically metered, and actually, uh, we did a Bitcoin brainstorm with uh, miners. This monetary policy uh, basically uh, was written in five lines of code. I did not know that until we did that Bitcoin brainstorm. It is so elegant, so simple, so straightforward. Uh, so in contrast, take a look at this. All right, this is uh, M2's, uh, uh, M2 growth, and it's, uh, it's uh, a four-year annualized percent change. And you can see it's all over the place. You can see in the 60s and 70s, um, it, it, was, uh, it moved toward double digits and we ended up with double digit inflation. Um, we're, we're in a very interesting environment and it's caused by um, monetary instability around the world. If by the end of the year, we stabilize around 0% year over year growth. Uh, that's year over year. This line will drop toward, uh, uh, two to 3%, which, um, which as you can see, we've only seen once it was in the nineties. And, uh, you know, after that, uh, you know, all hell broke loose around the world. In a recent broadcast, Kathy Wood, CEO and CIO of ARK Invest, and Yasin Almandra, ARK Invest's Director of Digital Assets, analyzed the Bitcoin having implications against the unstable monetary policies all around the world. With each having event, Bitcoin's issuance rate decreases by 50%, effectively stabilizing the cryptocurrency's inflation rate until the subsequent having year. Meanwhile, central banks' monetary policies typically involve increasing the money supply during periods of monetary easing, which may result in irreversible consequences. But what does all of this mean? Well, their observations typically imply that Bitcoin is on the road to continuous growth and appreciation, while traditional finance is slowly coming towards an anticipated collapse. Kathy believes that the U.S. Federal Reserve's plan to maintain high interest rates until inflation is controlled is a huge mistake. She believes that this would only worsen market and economic conditions, leading to struggles similar to past recessions. With that, Kathy urges immediate action to prevent another severe global financial crisis. Now, let's take a look at clips from the video where Kathy talks about Bitcoin's mathematically secure monetary policy, the instability of the global monetary system, and how the cryptocurrency industry acts as the ultimate safeguard against this widespread instability. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now, by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. This past March to March four years ago, uh, what is the monetary growth rate at an annual rate? Um, uh, that, that would be the last data point here, which is, uh, you can see the black dash land line. So that rate is about 8%. And uh, actually, it, probably it's closer to 6%. This is, there's a lot of data on, on uh, this chart. But take a look at the four-year growth rate of M2. And you can see it's all over the place. You can see in the 60s and 70s, um, it, it, was, uh, it moved toward double digits and we ended up with double digit inflation uh, in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, it took a while to get there and uh, it seemed to be very sticky. And then after uh, after uh, Chairman Volcker came onto the scene, I think that was 1979, he said, we have to get this thing under control. And he started choking money supply. And, uh, and that momentum actually continued into the mid 90s. And then in the mid 90s, it was very interesting because it's somewhat similar to today. In the mid '90s, um, you know, the the uh, there was a domino effect of currency devaluations around the world. Um, our monetary policy was propagating throughout the world because it is the world's reserve asset, and uh, the first devaluation actually was Mexico. Um, and it was a big one. I remember it very clearly because we were involved with Mexican stocks. 
Uh, and then uh, a few years later, uh, we had the Asian domino effect. I think the Thai baht devalued in uh, 1997. And then uh, the rest of Asia's currencies devalued. We had uh, the Russia Russian default in uh, 1998, and then we had long-term capital falling apart. Um, monetary policy uh, propagates through the system, and when it's so unpredictable, um, uh, it leads to all kinds of excesses. And uh, and so, what do we have now? Where we we see what happened because of COVID, that drove the four-year annualized growth in M2 up to 12%. And then now we've had a very sharp deceleration. Unlike the 70s, uh, 60s and 70s, where there was sort of an acceleration, um, at least in, in a, the sense of a trend and a stabilization near double digits. Here we had uh, money thrown at the system uh, to prevent an outright depression. And uh, if by the end of the year we stabilize around 0% year-over-year growth, uh, that's year-over-year, year, this line will drop toward uh, uh, 2 to 3%, which, um, which, as you can see, we've only seen once. It was in the 90s, and, uh, you know, after that, uh, you know, all hell broke loose around the world. The Fed has kept interest rates higher for longer, meaning the length of time from its last rate hike to the first cut. And you can see we're above average now. And you can also see the last uh, three times this happened, uh, when we were higher than even we are now, uh, w w was a harbinger of the 0809 uh, global financial crisis. It was uh, a harbinger of the tech and telecom bust uh, in 97, 98. And in 1969-70, it was the harbinger of a recession. According to Kathy, the Federal Reserve's decision to keep interest rates unchanged is causing more harm to already struggling economies. She points out that several currencies, like the Egyptian pound, Nigerian naira, and Argentine peso, have lost a lot of value against the U.S. dollar in the past year, between 40% to 60%. For example, the Egyptian pound lost more than two-thirds of its value against the dollar since early 2022 due to a shortage of foreign currency. But Kathy mentions that, fortunately, people in these countries have found a solution to protect themselves from currency devaluation by buying Bitcoin. With internet access, they can easily buy Bitcoin to safeguard their money. This has helped millions in poorer countries protect their savings from their national currencies losing value. Let us now return to Kathy Wood's broadcast for more of her insights. We're in a very interesting environment and it's caused by um, monetary instability around the world. And uh, so I, I often uh, talk to uh, Yassin about these devaluations. And of course, in emerging markets, uh, anyone with a connection to the internet now pretty much can uh, establish or buy an insurance policy in the form of Bitcoin, which uh, just flipping back to the having in this purple line doesn't doesn't look anything like the volatility you see in uh, monetary policy um, here in the United States and and around the world. Uh, and of course, it's controlled by human beings. When we went off the gold exchange standard in, uh, and closed the gold window in the United States in 1971, monetary policy just became unhinged. And it has been unhinged ever since, although human beings have tried to contain, uh, contain the uh, inflationary ramifications. And they they uh, they take it too far both ways. And right now, we think they're taking it too far on the downside. Here's the real Fed funds rate. So the Fed funds rate is uh, roughly 5.5% uh, uh, and 5 to 5.5%. Uh, and you can see the um, minus 3% gets us to 2.5% uh, there. 
if um, inflation does come down the way we expect and the Fed does not cut rates, which uh, uh, the markets now don't expect one until November, if they don't cut as uh, as inflation's coming down, then this this line is going to go out closer to 5%. Uh, again, we haven't seen that really since the 80s when inflation was still considered embedded or uh, at risk of going back to double digits. We're nothing like that today. Um, on the next page, this, this slide is um, how long uh, the Fed has kept interest rates higher for longer, meaning the length of time from its last rate hike to the first cut. And you can see we're above average now. And you can also see the last uh, three times this happened, uh, when we were higher than even we are now, uh, w w was a harbinger of the 0809 uh, global financial crisis. Uh, so that was 0607. It was uh, a harbinger of the tech and telecom bust uh, in 97, 98. And in 1969, 70, it was the harbinger of a recession. Um, so uh, just a quick note on fiscal policy. Um, it, you can see the deficit. We present this each time and just want to reinforce that the antidote to this deficit, which uh, in a so-called expansion, uh, it is at uh, six and a half percent. That that really has has not happened, except in the aftermath of the um, 0809 meltdown, uh, while stimulus was still flowing freely uh, in response to it. Uh, but we're we're not in such a meltdown now. And um, we do believe growth is going to be the solution as it was in the 90s. You can see the 90s uh, in the Clinton administration for the most part. Uh, we, we ended up back in a surplus, which was, um, which was a function of the very good growth. And I'll, I'll mention that uh, the internet uh, really started to take off in the early 90s. And that was a big part of the, that, uh, that decade of uh, growth. In other news, Bitfinex analysts predict Bitcoin may stabilize for up to two months after the halving, serving as a key indicator for the crypto market. They note a resilient macroeconomic environment and believe consumers and businesses are better prepared for economic shifts. They predict a period of consolidation in Bitcoin prices with potential swings of $10,000. Their report suggests that any positive impact from the halving will be seen later, coinciding with improved economic performance. Traders may also observe a market shift towards altcoins, with Ethereum notably outperforming Bitcoin. With all of that said, do you agree with Kathy's concerns about the U.S. Federal Reserve's approach to interest rates and its impact on global economic conditions? Feel free to share your comments and observations in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay updated with more similar content from us. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you again. For more Daily Dose Crypto News, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.